Hello there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right in a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. Thank you, Scott. Welcome aboard, everybody, to Must Read Alaska, coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. Well, guess who we have on the show today? We've got Mountain Mike Gordon. He's a writer. He's a former Anchorage Assemblyman, longtime owner of Chilkoot Charlie's, kind of a legend around here. And I'm also kind of a fan. In fact, I think I'm the president of this fan club. He's got a new book out called Dagnabbit, which is hot off the press. And I am going to recommend it to all of our listeners as a great book for Christmas. And everybody needs to go out and get a copy of this book and give it to somebody this Christmas. It's called Dagnabbit. It's by Mike Gordon. Welcome to the show, Mike. Thank you, Suzanne. Are we going to just confess right now that you're in Hawaii on vacation? Can we just kind of get that clear, clear the air on that? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I know you're suffering under abject uh, sort of circumstances up there. I, I watch the weather every day and shiver at the thought of coming home tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, it's like two degrees today, and and we're, we're and and John Akiski's in uh, John John Quick is in Akiski. John, how 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 cold is it over there where you are? Like, well, we are suffering down here. You know, it's uh, woke up. And parts of the Kenai Peninsula were negative 30 degrees, so uh, pretty chilly here. And uh, we had a great weekend, though. We uh, just a little bit of an update. We had a big event at our hardware, my hardware store in Kiski Hardware and Supply, where Santa was there, reindeer was there. We passed out 450 gifts, brand new gifts to kids uh, that showed up. We partnered up with a local nonprofit to do that. And had probably close to a thousand people come out for a free community event. So we're pretty excited about the turnout there, and very excited to have the legend uh, Mike Gordon here on the on the uh, show with us today. Yes, we are. So, Mike, you you we we've been looking at this book for a while, and I've I've got it in my hand, and I'm just absolutely fascinated by the layout. You've got all these people who have have written these uh, these uh, I guess these liner notes for it saying that it's a it's a great book and i agree and how long have you been out writing this particular book well um, a lot of the material in this book was written previous to the publication of my uh, first book learning the ropes Um, and because of the constraints imposed um, upon writing a memoir keeping it tight um, I didn't have room to put a lot of the stories that I'd already written. So much of the book was, um, was already written before, um, before I actually started to, to put it together. Yeah. And I, I've read uh, learning the ropes and that's all about a lot of it. It's about your climbing um, expeditions up Mount Denali and the seven mountains you climbed and Everest and the 25 marathons or whatever it is you've done which um, is also really impressive. It's, but this book is a little bit more about your business life. And there's a lot of tell all personal stuff about your marriage in here, which is um, fascinating. Your life as sort of the kingpin of Spinard, your friendship with Reuben Gaines. And, um, and in fact, am I right in, in thinking that a lot of the stuff in here are, are conversations you had with Reuben are just there. They're, it's, it's like history right here. Yeah, I was very fortunate to have a close relationship with Ruben for 25 years. Uh, he was my mentor. He was um, really more of a father to me uh, than my own father was. Um, and I'm saddened by the fact that so many people in Alaska today don't know who Ruben Gaines is. Um, you know, there's been another generation that's come along and a lot of new people that have moved to the state. and and uh, I think it would be a sad thing if we if we forgot how important he is to the state of Alaska and to to our, our common personality, if you will, as Alaskans and our our uniqueness, uh, such as it is. I, in order for 
What's important of that to remain, it's important that we remember Reuben because we are unique in a lot of ways. Uh, um, because of... Well, let's talk a little bit about because, him. He was Because a, he of was one a, man. Because of one a, man. He entertained the entire state of Alaska for 50 years. That's right. Now, for those who don't know, he was a cartoonist. So let's talk about his cartoons. His cartoons really circ- sort of... Um, centered around this character, Chilkoot Charlie's. And for some reason, you were able to convince him to let that be the name of your your um, nightclub down here in Spinard. Well, it really wasn't very hard to convince him. I took him out to lunch at the Black Angus restaurant one day, and I had a, a little agreement written up, and I um, suggested that, um, that I wanted to use the name Chilkoot Charlie's in the bar business, and he just immediately said, wow, I've great name for a bar and signed it and we were off and running. Basically the uh, agreement allowed him to sell his cartoons and his books and his records and so forth in the bar. Uh, and, and over the, over the years, he didn't sell that many books in the bar. Uh, he did not. Albums. P- yeah. People don't go to, didn't go to Choku Charlie's to buy books or albums or anything like that or cartoons. And so, um, you know, the bar was over the years very successful. And at a particular point, I decided that it was also unfair because of the contribution that he had made early on. And so I arranged a, a retirement for him from the proceeds of Choku Charlie's. That is really interesting. So he, uh, he's, he, I think it's part of the deal. And I'm reading this book that you gave him uh, free drinks at the bar for the rest of his life or something like that. How'd that go? <laughs> that that well, just seems really, that seems really sketchy for, to me. I'm sorry. For a guy that liked to drink a lot, he didn't abuse it. <laughs> I can <laughs> say that. <laughs> uh, he actually well, got himself like this- into trouble with that one time up in Fairbanks. He walked into the Fairbanks. Well, actually the Esther Choku Charlie's after my Fairbanks operation got burned down. He went up there to visit his friend, uh, Rusty Herlane, who was, uh, was one of the finest artists in Alaska ever produced. And uh, he walked into Choku Charlie's and I had a bartender working there by the name of Jim Abels. Reuben walked in with Rusty in tow and said, Mike Gordon, um, I have an arrangement with Mike Gordon. I, I can drink free at Choku Charlie's for the rest of my life. <laughs> Abel said, oh, is that true? So. Uh, Abel is a character in his own right. Set him up with, he six packed him with screwdrivers, both of them. But by the time I got there, there were screwdrivers all over the bar. And, Uh-oh. <laughs> and the party took off from there. I was just getting started. Well, how did you end up getting into the, the bar business in the first place? You came up to Alaska after, after you graduated from college. Am I right? Um, no. Um, I, I came up to Alaska when I was 10. Okay. And you, were, I, you, you weren't in college then. You weren't that smart. No, I wasn't. I graduated from Anchorage High School in 1960, and I went to the University of Alaska in Fairbanks my freshman year. And then I went to the University of San Francisco. Uh, That's right. You, and you went down there, and then you came up in a car. You, yeah, I, I, I came up and actually I came up in a Volkswagen camper towing a four by six trailer with everything that I owned in mm-hmm. it. My pregnant wife and a dog that went into heat the day that we left. Right? Great. <laughs> and my uh, my little daughter. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I I had, I went back to uh, to California to finish my college education, and I ended up. Um, because I had, I got married my junior year and I didn't finish it. And I went back down there and, and I ended up going to work to support my family instead of going to school. And it took me 46 years to get back to graduating from the University of San Francisco, which I did in 2011. Wow. But anyway, I, I got stuck down there for a few years and drove back up the Alcan Highway in uh, 1967. In a VW yeah. bus, and I, I know those did not have very strong uh, engines in them, you know, to no. be able to, 
to take those mm-hmm. hills. Man, those things, you probably have to get out and push. We, we, crawl, we crawled up some of the hills in the Canadian Rockies. I literally. know you did. You'd have to, you'd have to be in, in first to get up some of those hills. I'm surprised you even made it. I remember having one of those um, VW buses and mine broke down. Um, I think I was heading over to the Idaho to do some whitewater rafting and mine broke down on the way. And well, as it turned out, I didn't have the money to, to get it fixed. So I just went back to Alaska and, and I think ended up working in fisheries to make some more money to buy another car. But I never did get, did get a um, VW bus because those things, those engines just were weak. Well, I, I, yeah. And it, and I had one of those air heaters in it too. And so the first winter I lived in a Quonset hut in Muldoon and uh, went back to work for New York Life selling life insurance and drove around that very cold winter, as I recall it, in that DW bus. And then in, in 1960, in December of 67, I became a partner in the birdhouse. Right. With Johnny Textrum and Norm Roeberg, and we ran. And, and and Norm, and where was the birdhouse located? For people who don't know. Well, it was like 39, 37 miles, something like that. 40, right. I can't remember exactly. Down the Alcant, I mean. Down the, down <laughs> down the Stewart Highway, highway on, on the way to Girdwood. Exactly. It was in it was in Bird. Right. At Bird Creek. Mm-hmm. And we ran it for a year, and then we sold it to Dick Delac, who ran it for many years after that. And um, a year to the day after we sold it, um, I opened up Choku Charlie's in Spinard. And and your uh, and your relationship with Ruben, um, you know, it, 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 how did you get the money to open up Choku Charlie's? Because well, that that was back in the oil days, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was actually a little bit before that. Um, I I met when I had the birdhouse with Norm and John. I I met a fellow by the name of Bill Jacobs, who was an attorney in Anchorage, and I convinced him of the idea of uh, taking the birdhouse format and uh, an Alaskan themed bar into Anchorage, where all the people were. Did he buy off on that? The what? Did he buy that? Did he think it would work? Yeah, yeah. He he borrowed twenty thousand dollars from his mother, and that was our down payment for the Alibi Club that we bought from Skip Fuller and Jack Griffin. Mm-hmm. It was basically a Fourth Avenue bar in Spinard, mm-hmm. um, and we paid back his mother, well, I believe, within within the first year. Oh man! So you guys, you just came roaring out of the gate and did great. It did. Yeah, it was like holding on to the the rear bumper of an accelerating vehicle, trying to keep my legs moving fast enough to keep up with it. So, uh, Mike, this is John Quick. Um, you know, Choku Charlie's it was, was and is arguably the most famous bar in Alaska. What do you attribute that success to? Was it right timing, good staff, good marketing plan? Um, you had success over decades. And most people are happy to have success, you know, keep it a couple years. You, you kept it multiple decades. How do you, what do you attribute that to? I noticed you didn't mention good management. <laughs> <laughs> Certain amount of luck involved too. I mean, uh, opening a bar up during a, a boom period uh, certainly got us off to a good start, but it was, it was a good idea. And, Unarguably, um, all the bars that existed in Anchorage at the time that I opened up the birdhouse were either strip joints or neighborhood bars, or they were mimicking outside operations in one way or another. And there was, I mean, at, at that time, Juno had the Red Dog, Fairbanks had the Malamute, little Homer had the, the Salty Dog. Dog. Yeah. But Anchorage, Anchorage didn't have anything like that. So that was that was my idea, and it turned out to be a pretty good one. So, so let's talk about the the windmill out front. Tell us the story about the windmill. Well, <laughs> uh, let's see. It originally uh, belonged to um, the guy that had uh, the liquor store, Cut Rate Kid, on Fireweed Lane. Um, and he he died and the business went out of business. It was uh, Gillum, who was uh, the father of 
Gillum, who owned McKinley Finance, um, or McKinley Investments. Anyway, uh, the, the windmill was sitting there, and it was not uh, there for any purpose anymore. He did, uh, Gillum had brought it up from Oregon and constructed it as a, uh, a landmark. And it was during the early 80s, Anchorage was booming. There was a guy uh, by the name of uh, Mafia Mike who had a pizza uh, parlor. Did you see his name? Did you see his name was Mafia Mike? Mafia Mike, yeah. He, he had a pizza parlor and he was a colorful character. He would advertise yes. his pizzas on TV and he'd, he'd wear a black fedora, you know, and and a black shirt and a white tie. And, and he would act like a, a mafioso advertising his pizzas. Anyway, uh, he bought the windmill and uh, he was going to use it for a landmark at another location out in Midtown. And right about that time, the, the crap hit the fan. Sheik Yamani opened the spigots. The price of oil went from $40 to $10 a barrel overnight. And it dashed a lot of plans of a lot of people including Mafia Mike's. And so um, here he was the owner of the windmill and uh, he didn't have any need for it anymore, but the people who owned the property wanted him to get it off of there. <laughs> yeah. so he didn't know exactly what to do and he asked around and somebody told him, well, why don't you go talk to Mike Gordon? He'll buy anything. <laughs> that's, that's what he told me, um, which is not entirely untrue. Um, and I explained that in the book. Uh, so anyway, I, uh, the deal was that uh, he would give it to me uh, since it was going to cost money to move it. And he didn't have any money. He said that he would give it to me as long as I uh, moved it, paid for the expense and put a plaque on it saying that it was donated to the community of Spinard by Mafia Mike, which I did. It cost me about $10,000 to move it and re-erect it. And I did put his plaque on there, which disappeared um, at some point along the way. No longer yes, but some, some local Spernardian decided it needed to go home. Yeah, them, you know, I used but, to say that I could I could put a thousand pound rock out behind the bar. And, and somebody would take it. Property of Choku Charlie's on it and somebody would steal it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is a little bit of a mm, colorful neighborhood, shall we put it? I mean, that's about the best I could say. But you ended up having to like put some barbed wire around it because all your um, your patrons were like climbing up that that windmill and they, they're bound and determined to kill themselves. And so what did you have to do now? Yeah. 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 We, uh, we did have to do that. Um, something we should have anticipated. I described that in the book too. the, the loons, the spinard loons. Yeah. The red eyed spinard loons. Yeah. I think that's how you described them. Yeah. Well, uh, what's your favorite story out of this whole anthology? It's, it's a great, it's a great book people. It's called Dag Nabbit. It's written by mountain Mike. Mike Gordon is uh, absolutely legendary in Alaska as the owner of Chilkoot Charlie's founder of it. And um, at this point, you're not the owner anymore. You sold the, the business, but then you've retired. And actually he's, he's calling in today from a vacation in Hawaii. So life is good for mountain Mike. Um, but what's your, what do you, when you think about this book and all the great stories and there's so many in here, which one do you think is the one that you like the best? That's hard to answer, Suzanne. Um... Some of them are more meaningful to me emotionally than others. Um, the story well, you get real about, personal in some of them. Some of them are all about your divorce and, and and and. Actually, you know, actually, this book is not as personal as the first book, um, you know, "Learning the Ropes." That was more personal. This one has more history in it, and it does it does have some personal things in it. But I really bared my soul in "Learning the Ropes," which is. I don't feel like I did that in, in Dag Nabbit, although you know, I did uh, talk about some personal things. I, I think uh, Dale and Sherry, um, some of the ones about the people that I write about, Dale and Sherry is one, and um, Dan Lowell. Um, I also, and th the first story in the book about Ruby Rodeberg who was my surrogate mother when I was growing up in Spinard. 
Yeah, Ruby Rothberg. Norm's uh, that's uh, Norm's wife, or no, that was his that Norm's mom. That's his mom, mm-hmm. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, this is a really uh, interesting. It's it's every every story kind of holds together by itself. You don't have to actually. You can pick it up anywhere and start reading. It's a great book for airplanes. It's a great beach read if you want to go to the beach and read this because. You can just sort of pick it up and put it down anywhere and you're going to find a great story in here. And I highly recommend it because you have a, um, a real gift for writing. And I'm so glad you took the time to write this because uh, this is actually Anchorage history right, right in my hand here. Um, I'm pretty impressed. I've always wanted to write a book and I think I've written a couple chapters to books that were written out there. I did a, a, a chapter on extreme sports once for an uh, extreme sporting book but here you've, you've this is your second um, anthology of stories and um, this one really pretty much dedicated a lot of Reuben Gaines in here the cartoonist Reuben Gaines a lot of uh, talking about your friendship with him there's also a lot in here about you, know, you and Shelly your wife and and the ups and downs of trials of being married and being a notorious bar owner um, that's the personal stuff that I, I find um, pretty interesting and um and all the colorful people that came into your life all these years i just want to thank you so much for being on our show and um is there anything else you'd like to say to the to the must read alaska nation out there other than the fact that you've got this let's go brandon t-shirt on it looks really good on you by the way thank you um just that uh, the book can be uh, purchased on my website which is mikegordonauthor.com Um, And I'd be happy to personalize and uh, send them to friends of yours or to you uh, personally out there. It's also available at Costco, and I will be um, in Costco signing the book um, the weekend after I get back to Anchorage. Um, Let me quickly get the date here. I'm going to be... I'm going to be at the DeBar Costco on the 18th, and I'll be at the Diamond Costco on the 19th, all day starting at 10 o'clock. And, and of course, the books should be available uh, at Barnes & Noble and other places. It's not available on Amazon yet. There's such an enormous operation that it takes a while to get things worked out with them, but um, it'll get there eventually. And I just want to say that I'm really proud of this book. Um, Ruben was a, a dear friend, and uh, I was, I'm so happy to try to resurrect him in, in the minds and in the knowledge of Alaskans. And I, I know that uh, Phil and John and, and, and Christine, his children, are, are very happy with it also, which pleases me a great deal. That's great. Well, you preserved him for history and, 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 and he's, he's in history now. Nobody's going to forget him for sure. You made sure that that happened. And I enjoy all the cartoons that you've included in here by him. They're, they're always, um, they're so classically him. Uh, he was, he had such a great talent for his, uh, for his work. We really enjoyed and, and talking you know, to him. He, he designed the logo, the logo for Chokey Charlie's too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I read that in the book. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate being on the show. We've had my mountain Mike Gordon on our show today. I'm president of his fan club. I would love to have everybody go out and buy a copy of this book, Dag Nabbit by Mike Gordon, a great book for Christmas. And um, it's something you can give anyone if anybody in your family, pretty much it's not really rated R. I think anybody who's older than 18 pretty much get a kick out of this book. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. If you're a supporter of Must Read Alaska, please hit that donate button on the right hand side. And if you'd like to support the conservative side of the news, that's how you do it. Your support allows us to stay strong and just making sure that we balance out the mainstream media. So until next week, everybody, we're signing off now from somewhere in Alaska. Bye.